week. All right, hey team, well, welcome to our Wednesday night call. It is Wednesday, January 9th. It is our second call of the year. Exciting. Um, so thank you to everybody that made it on the call live. If you're watching the recording, um, try your best to be on the team calls. You missed out on a little bit by not being on the calls live. You've missed a little bit of whatnot. So tonight we have slides. So I ask if you're on the call, be present on the call. Don't use the call as a time to work your business. This is not a good time to work your business because this is a time to grow as a coach and whatnot. So a couple of quick announcements. Um, super weekend is this weekend. Try to find a location near you. If you go into the, you are not getting in my blanket. If you go to the Coach Online office, you can find different locations. Just search in the FAQ that says like um, type in Super Weekend and it'll pop up. They'll be doing videos with any announcements where the 2020 Success Club trip is. Ashley, do not be taking an Insta photo right now while I am batting my dog away because <laughs> this is my face. Um, they'll be announcing where the 2020 trip is at. Um, I don't think they'll be announcing any new stuff. They'll be talking about some new releases that are coming up and any fun stuff and announcing the top 10. We finally, I say that with love, have a new top coach in the business. It only took four years for somebody to knock her out and I'm super pumped about that. I mean that in a loving way. I know, I know. Somebody's like, wait, what? I loved our old top coach, but it's nice to have new, like somebody that can like get themselves up there and be a new top coach. Um, that's what I meant by that. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to dive in. I do have slides for tonight. Slides are always fun. Um, if I can get to the correct slides. Um, and there we go. Crystal, you are the first person on my screen. Do you see the slide? Good. Okay. So tonight, guys, we're going to talk about overcoming limiting beliefs if they want to work. Um, and what's holding yourself back in the business. Because nine out of 10 times, when you stop working the business, when you're not going as hard as you could, when you haven't reached your goals, when whatever reason it may be, it's because of you that's holding yourself back. So tonight, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. Okay. Um, so when I started my business, I actually went all in with my business. I was somebody that I didn't wait for trainings. We didn't have them. I didn't wait for calls. I didn't wait for answers. I found them on my own and I went all in. I hit Emerald in the first month of my business. I hit Diamond in the first seven months of my business. I hit Success Club pretty much every single month. Um, but it was, I don't remember when we moved. Maybe September of 2013, we left Ohio to go to New York. My husband and I were newly married. Um, I had just graduated with both of my degrees. I have a degree in um, social work and a degree in general studies and general studies mainly because I couldn't pick a major for my life depending on it. Um, so I feel like general studies, like when they give you a pity like degree and they're like, here you go, you couldn't decide what you wanted. Here's a degree. Um, so I got two of those. But I didn't do anything with either of them, and I went into retail management, and I just kind of let my business go at the wayside. Um, I was in and out of Emerald. I lost all diamond rank that I had. I didn't really hit success club. I put on the weight. Um, and the reason my business failed at that time was I said I didn't have enough time. I was too busy. I wasn't fit enough. Money, I didn't have the money. Going from Ohio to New York, not the cheapest thing in the world. Um, I think we went to like $500 rent. I don't remember what our rent was. It was well over a thousand in Webster, probably well over a thousand. Um, so it was a big price jump. And then just as everything changed, new job, new location, not near family, not near friends. Um, so my business failed at that moment because I had the most limiting beliefs on my life. I didn't have the time. Money was tight. My clothes did, or my clothes didn't fit, my goodness. I wasn't fit enough. Coaches were quitting left and right. And of course they were quitting left and right because I had quit, hold on, I gotta mute some people. I had quit my business. So of course my coaches were quitting. Um, so I had two choices. I could give up or I could go all in with my business and go after it. And it wasn't until a couple of months later, it wasn't until February, 2014, that I decided enough was enough and I had to go in with my business. So most of the time, what is holding us back from going all in with our business or even going half in with our business is our own limiting beliefs within ourselves. We're not good enough. We're not fit enough. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough coaches. So it's kind of what we're gonna go over tonight. So the first one is I don't have enough money. 
This is probably the number one objection that we hear from every single person that we talk to. Um, and if you're not hearing it, that's awesome because that means that you're facing that objection in your daily social media posts or in your daily Instagram stories. Um, and it's easy when someone says, well, I can't afford it right now where we're just like, oh, okay. And we, we, we give them that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That assurance that that obstacle that that reason that they're telling themselves they can't join is okay when in fact we need to be able to relate to them and let them know there's other options um so relating to somebody is key when they say well i don't have the money to become a coach i talked to somebody earlier and she's like well i really want shakeology but i won't be able to afford it after the first month so i don't see why i should become a coach well your goal as a coach your first three months as a coach is to are in Success Club Five. That's $150 a month of income. That's going to cover your beach body fees, your coach fees, and that's going to cover your Shakeology. So that was something I talked to her about. Well, if you know that you're not going to be able to afford it after the first month, why not work the business the first month so you can afford it? Um, as a retail manager, I was taking in less than $2,000 a month, which is a decent amount of money, but I was working over 40 hours a week. I was a retail manager. I made next, made next to nothing. This wasn't even, I don't even think I was contributing to a 401k. Is that what those things are called? My husband takes care of all that. I know nothing about those things. Um, what I make now is triple, sometimes quadruple what I used to make as a manager in one month. So relating to people is the key. And if this is something that you're facing um, as well, this is something you can do or something you can have the potentials do is have them do a budget audit. So when I first became a coach, I didn't buy Shakeology. I didn't buy anything. I didn't think I could afford it. Um, in fact, I think I was buying Shakeology off eBay. I know, really good way to be a good coach, right? Um, and I could have afforded it. I was a waitress and I was spending money on food at the place that I worked where, yes, we got a discount, but I was still spending food. When I was going to classes during the day, I was getting Subway or whatever fast food restaurant was on campus, I was grabbing Starbucks. So I did have the money, but I had to do a budget audit to see where I could save. So when I'm talking to somebody they're like, well, I really want to do this, but I don't have the money. I always say, well, if this is something that you truly, truly want to do for the next week, track where you're spending, see where you can save that. Nine out of 10 times people can truly afford it. They just have to have like their eyes open to where they're putting their money at. Um, and of course, like I said at the end, you can save money if you truly, truly want to do this. The next one is I don't want to be too salesy. And this is something I've heard from other coaches. I don't want to be salesy. Um, I don't want to post because I don't want to be that coach. I don't want to be that direct sales. I don't want to be that MLM. If you feel like what we do is salesy, you're either a brand new coach or you are not invested in what we offer. And what I mean by that is you need a personal attachment to the products and to the programs. If you yourself think they're too expensive, if you yourself think that what coaches do is salesy, then you don't believe in what we do. You don't have an attachment. You haven't seen an inner change or an outer change. You haven't had a transformation and you need to get that. I'm not saying you need this huge transformation like I talked about in the new coach call, but you need to believe in the products because if you don't believe in the products, no one else is going to join you. I had somebody that messaged me the other day and she wanted to become a coach. She goes, but I refuse to do shakes and any supplements and I probably won't work out. I'm just gonna go to the gym. I'm like, so why do you want to be a coach? Like you're not going to be successful. You're not going to have people that are going to want to join you if you're not using the products, if you don't have a personal attachment to the products. Yes, you can do other things on top of Beachbody. I do spin, I do running, but I still have a personal attachment to energize and to Shakeology. And I am very passionate about certain programs like Court of Force. I lost 20 pounds. Turbo Fire, I lost 45 pounds. Like I have a personal attachment and I believe in these programs and these products. You need to do the same. So if something you've been telling yourself of why you're not successful in the business, why you won't post, why you won't get started, if it's because I don't want to be salesy, then you need to have a deep inner chat with yourself. Were you sold to? What I mean by that is when you became a coach, did your coach sell you on it? I'm going to go with no. So if they didn't, why should you feel any different? If you weren't sold to, if you weren't drawn to your coach and they weren't salesy, why do you feel any different? And something to remember, 
every single company sells something, but do you perceive Target as being salesy? Do you perceive Kohl's as being salesy? What are those other obnoxious commercials? Apple. Apple has the worst commercials, and I'm an Apple fan, but I really want to punch my TV when certain ones come on. Every single company is salesy, but chances are you don't perceive those big box stores as salesy. You're waiting in Starbucks, they're trying to sell you mugs. You're waiting in Target, there's, you're, they're trying to sell you stuff. You go to TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls, whatever it's called, you have that long line of all that crap that they put in there that they're trying to sell to you. Every single person. But we don't feel that way about those places. So why do you feel that way about Beachbody? So if this is something that you've really been struggling with, I really hope you take to heart the words that I have on this slide and the words that I said, because chances are, like I've already said, you are not invested in what we offer and you don't have a personal attachment and you need to find that. I don't have time. This is something that honestly drives me bonkers um, when people tell me this. So I don't have time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Um, somebody once told me, well, you have all the time in the world because your husband's home. On top of Beachbody, we run another full-time business. So I'm not just sitting around all day, scrolling social media, scrolling stories. I work a lot more than people think that I do. And my husband is constantly doing stuff, whether it's around the house or whether it's for the other business. So time management is something that is crucial. And it's not something that's inherited. So if you're like, well, I'm not good at time management, become good at it. Learn about it. Anytime you say that I'm not good at something, become good at it. Don't use it as an excuse. So if you say, I don't have time, don't use it as an excuse. Learn to manage your time. Learn to be good with the time that you have. I was talking to another coach. We did a new uh, coach call the other day. And she's like, I have to be a lot more diligent with the time that I have because work's getting busier. So she's already recognized that she has to be diligent with the time that she has. If you are just scrolling stories, if you are just scrolling social media throughout the day and you're not working your business, then you are not being diligent with your time. I heard another coach say one time, like watching stories are a reward to herself. If she has not worked her business and she has not done the things that she needs to do, then she can't watch stories. And that's why she went from being having 300 coaches in her downline to over 1,300 coaches in her downline and being the fifth, number 15 coach in the business this year and having her first six-figure year because she was diligent with it the time that she had. She quit wasting time on stories, on social media feed, on things that did not count towards her business. And don't tell me, well, I worked my business today. I worked out. No, that doesn't count as working your business. Congratulations, you were proof of the product you took care of yourself. But that doesn't count as working your business. Every single coach, and I don't know why I put almost, so I'm going to put every single coach is busy, but they make it happen. If they can make it happen, you can make it happen. We have people on our team that are nine to fivers, eight to fours, whatever, there is 12s work 24 hours that are deployed, that are moms, that are nurses, that are teachers. And they're still successful with their business because they've learned to manage their time. I'm not saying you have to work your business five, six, seven, eight hours a day, but you can squeeze in an hour. And don't hate me for saying this, but maybe you have to give up some stuff. Maybe you have to give up a television show. Maybe you have to give up watching a show live at night. Instead, you need to work your business and watch the recording. If you are not where you want to be in your business and you're doing things that aren't going to further you in your business, then it's time to do an audit and say, what do I need to sacrifice? And I've said it before and I'll say it again. The sacrifices you make now will be worth it in the end. When I was first building my business in 2014, I can't tell you how many hours I spent on my business, the lack of sleep I got, which I'll never recommend like giving up sleep for working the business. The weekends I sacrificed, how I would get home from work and I would work my business till two, three in the morning and then get up and work out and do what I need to do. And those sacrifices were worth it because now I'm home. Bill's home. We're both home with Evelyn, watching her hit her milestones, watching her grow up. It sucks in the beginning, giving up things and making those sacrifices, but it's worth it in the end. So if this is a limited belief that you've been telling yourself that I don't have time, quit using it as an excuse and learn time management. Oops, sorry, I got to Um, okay, next one. 
I'm working a lot, but I'm not getting anywhere. It's another limiting of belief that we have. And I have used this so many times as my crutch. Um, sorry, my phone went off as my crutch. Well, I'm sending out all the invites and I'm following all the people and I'm doing all the follow-ups and I'm tracking my business. But when chances were, most of the time, I wasn't doing everything I could have been to doing my business. I was watching Insta stories. I was scrolling social media. When you're doing those things, that's not working. That's just wasting time. So what you need to do is you need to start tracking your business. And one person commented on it in the team page, but Carl Dykler did a new, uh, the um, national wake up call on Monday. And he challenged every coach to print out 52 weeks of the BAT. And Ashley Barrowald was the only person that did it. Don't be the coaches like, well, I have it in a notebook. If you expect your coaches to be printing and doing their BAT, you need to be doing the same exact thing. You need to track your business. And I talked about this. I was on a new coach call the other night. And I was like, the reason we track our business is you're going to be like, you know, I did everything right this week. Why didn't I have a higher pay tracker? Why didn't I have a better month? You're going to go look at your business activity track tracker. Did you send out all your advice? Did you do all your follow-ups? Did you add to your network? Chances are you didn't do everything. And that's why we track our business. So we can see where we're not working when we really think we are working. I was tracking my follow-ups. I was tracking my reach outs, the people I was adding to my network. I can add to my network like a boss, but I wasn't inviting because I was scared because I was scared of hearing no, because I was scared of being rejected, because I was scared of being black. And now I don't care anymore because when you don't invite, you are not growing your business. If you have on your vision board that you want to be a diamond by the first quarter, that you want to be a certain star diamond by the end of the year, you need to buckle up, pick, put your big girl pants on and start sending out invites because the only way to add to your team is by inviting. So if you're telling yourself, well, I'm doing all the things that I need to be doing, but I'm not getting anywhere, are you really? It's time to gut check yourself or reach out to your coach and be like, what am I not doing enough of? But if you don't have a BAT, we cannot tell you that. This one we hear a lot. Um, mine's a little bit different because Bill has always been on board with coaching, um, but my significant other is not on board. Not all of them are going to be. Men tend to be a little bit more um, standoffish to the business. And the only reason I say that is because and, and not all people are like, men tend to be the more like financial ones. They like tend to see the end road and they're afraid that you're going to lose money. They're afraid that you're going to waste time. They're afraid that you're going to be on your phone all the time, X, Y, and Z. Um, so first things first is if your significant other is not on board, have you figured out the concrete and true reason why you want to do this? Is it because you want to help pay off your mortgage? Is it because maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and you want to bring something to the table? You want to have a reason besides your awesome kiddos to get up, something to contribute to the family. If you haven't figured out that concrete and true reason of why you want to do this, you need to do that and you need to share that with them. The beginning of the, or the end of the year when we were making our vision boards, I included Bill on our vision board because this isn't just a me business, this is an us business. I asked him, is there anything that I'm missing? Is there anything that you think I need to add on? Is there something on here that's not the most realistic? Because he's the one that kind of brings me back down at times. Um, and that's why he's on board with this business. And after that, they're still not on board with this business, show them a paycheck. Show them the first paycheck that you made. Show them like, look, I did this because I've been sharing my journey. I've been sharing my journey on social media. I've been inviting other people. This is what I've been doing. And if they're still not on board, you need to continue to show up and show them that you can and will be successful. Sometimes it takes them a while to get on board. Bill's always supported me with this business, but it really wasn't until he went to our for one of our first coach summits together that he really understood the impact that this business can make. And I remember being able to bring him on that free success club trip. And man, the minute you guys earn your free trip to success club, bring your significant other, show him like you did this, you did this with your business. This is what happened. Now you're able to treat them to this free vacation. And that's another thing with your paychecks that you're getting, treat them, whether it's a car wash, it's a date night, it's buying, taking them to a movie, maybe buying them a game that they've been wanting. Show them like, I was able to do this for you because of Beachbody. And one thing I cannot recommend enough 
you need to set boundaries with your business. Nine out of 10 times when significant others are disgruntled about the business, it's because you are spending all day and all night on your phone. Now, when I say you need to make sacrifices, you should not be making a sacrifice with your marriage or your relationship. Because at the end of the day, that is not worth losing over a business. And you're not building a business by being on your phone all day and all night. Um, Ali Upham is a coach that I highly respect in the business and she has what she calls an electronic free hours and she is not on her phone for three hours every single day. That is the time she spends with her kiddo. That is the time she is with her husband. And those are the times that she will not answer messages. She will not post on stories. She will not check in on challenge groups. She will not check in on followers. Set boundaries with your business because your spouse, your significant other will become resentful of the business if you are spending all of your day and night on your phone. That's not how you build a successful business. So please, if anything out of this call and you're in a relationship, please take that in and remember that, okay? I can't find anyone. I love this one, I really don't. So a limiting belief of why coaches don't grow in the businesses. Well, I can't find anybody to join me. How many invites are you sending out? How many people are you constantly adding to your social media? Sometimes you're gonna feel like you've exhausted your entire contact list, so you just stop. You think that's the right thing to do. Like, I've invited everybody, so I just stop. But that's not the right way. I don't, I don't, uh, I should've just said when I went in my live, Bill and I were talking the other day in the car, and he had said something like, letting the team know, okay, and this is gonna kinda of go off topic of what we're talking about, but I think it kinda of goes hand in hand. Like you will have moments in your life that derail you from your business. Um, when I first found out I was pregnant, we didn't announce for the first four weeks and I was sick, like real sick. Me and the couch were BFFs for the first 18 weeks of my pregnancy. I didn't work out. I didn't drink my Shakeology. I didn't eat my veggies. I was lucky if I drank water. Um, and those first four weeks, it was rough. I didn't know what to post. I wasn't sharing my workouts. People were like, why aren't you working out? I was sharing old selfies, like hoping nobody realized like that was the same selfie I had posted weeks ago. Um, I was sick. People were like, wow, you're really sick for a month. Well, yeah. Um, but you will have moments that derail you in the business, but don't let them derail you permanently. Don't allow them to knock you down where you lose everything you've built in your business because every time you stop working your business, you have to start over again. Every time you stop working your business, you lose the trust of your coaches, of your challengers, of your followers. So um, if you have one of these limiting beliefs, don't allow it to completely derail you and stop you from working your business. Sorry for that little tangent. So I send out anywhere from 100 to 150 invites a week. So when you say, well, I can't find anybody. 50% of the people that I talk to have never heard of Beachbody. I'm like, have you heard of Beachbody before? Like, no, I'm like, Tony Horton, no. Sean T, no. 21 Day Fix Containers, no. So then I'm introducing them to Beachbody. There are millions or billions, I don't even know the population of the United States. And you don't even have the United States, y'all. You have Canada, you have the United Kingdom, you have all of these different areas. There are people out there that need you. So when you say, well, I can't find anybody, that is a bull crap only excuse. It's a limiting belief that you have put on yourself. Invite to your warm market while you're building your cold market. You should constantly be building your cold market, adding new friends on Facebook, getting involved in Facebook groups, growing your social, um, your Instagram. If you're working from a business page, growing your business page, but you should constantly be building your cold market. And while you're building your cold market, invite with your warm market. Do call to actions. That's what CTA means, call to actions on social media. Every single person in this photo, minus Emily, I met on social media. Um, Jill, I am her grandma coach. I, Emily and I have adopted her. Social media. Ashley, social media. Laura Moon, social media. Emily, she's probably like the one coach that I know in real life outside of social media like that signed up to become a coach. You will always be able to find people if you don't use it as an excuse, because that's exactly what it is, is it's an excuse. And look at that cute little photo from Summit. That's adorable. All right. I hear this one a lot from you guys. I feel like everyone is saying no. You will hear no's, okay? Um, I said no for an entire year. And now because I finally said yes, my upline has over 250 coaches underneath her. Because I finally said yes. I said no for an entire year. Lisa Douglas is on our team. 
she told me no probably for two years um i think emily said no a couple times well i don't think it was necessary to me but to like the other coaches um you will hear no over and over and over again to the point where you're like if i hear another no i'm going to scream but when you're hearing no after no after no that means you're inviting that means people are getting to know you that you're in their year and the yeses will follow two out of three of my coaches have probably followed me for a nine months or more before they said yes i want you to ask yourself when you're inviting somebody why should i expect them to say yes am i giving them content on social media am i sharing my daily life am i sharing whether it's a transformation that because you finished a program or little tidbits along the way of these changes that you've made why should you expect them to say yes? Almost every full-time coach, it took them one or two years to build a solid income or to match their current one. So a lot of times we expect our business to grow overnight. I've been a coach for three months. Why am I not further along? Why am I not making more money? I've been a coach in this business will be six years this month. And I have not had a hit a six-figure year. Do I want to hit a six figure a year? Absolutely. Are there coaches that have been in the business uh, shorter than me that have hit six figure years? Absolutely. But it takes time and it takes consistent and it takes hearing no. So if you decide that you're going to quit working your business just because you've heard no 500 times, that's a, that's a crappy reason. Mine took two years and two years of hitting Success Club every single month to match my income. And now, like I said, I'm making anywhere from three to four times as much as I made in the retail world. Don't expect it happen to, to happen overnight. Don't expect it to happen in the first year and don't expect it to happen in the second year. And I know you're like, oh my gosh, Ashley, that makes it sound like so daunting. But I want you to have realistic expectations of this business because if you come into this business and you expect to make six figures in the first year or in the second year, you're gonna feel defeated when it doesn't happen. Set realistic expectations. And then lastly, create a FOMO atmosphere. So something I'm gonna start doing is we used to do in our challenges, we're, we're gonna do within our team, is I'm gonna start doing like dance off Mondays or lip sync battle Mondays. Because when you're sharing that on your stories, when you're sharing that on social media, when other people see that, maybe not necessarily just that, they're gonna to wanna to join you. I always have a huge, um, increase in new coaches after summit and after success club trips and after our team retreats because they see us having fun they see us going to these new places they see us taking these trips that were free and they have fomo you need to do the same with coaching you need to create a fomo atmosphere every morning i'm doing karaoke making my mom cry and it may seem silly but people love it and they're like all right what are you drinking because i need to get on that I'm creating this FOMO atmosphere. And then actually, this is Leslie, don't get attached to the invites. I know it gets hard to send out the invites and then you get crushed when they say no. You can't get attached to the invites um, because when you do that, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt a little bit more. So don't get too attached to those, okay? So <laughs> this is an old photo of still tonight. This, I actually took this photo the day I get put in my notice at my job. Um, I don't really know if this is a call to action. Um, these are just some last things I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to open it up to any questions or any um, feedback that you guys have, or if anybody wants to like say how they can relate to any of these. Um, you need to identify your biggest roadblock and the proper path to overcome it. I can tell you without a doubt, my biggest roadblock is that I don't have support from above. Yes, I have an upline who is an amazing friend but we are on two different labels with our business and the uplines above that they're not there so sometimes i use that as a reason to not work as hard or as a reason why i haven't gotten further because i don't have all these trainings and i don't have these diamond memberships i don't have x y and z so i'm going to create the proper path to overcome it and I posted in the team page today, today was elite calls and premiere calls, and I hate this day of the year, and I've hated it for the last two years. Um, and I start to throw myself a pity party. But I can't do that, because why, what's the point of that? So ask yourself, why not you? Why not you be successful in this business? 
why not you go from one star to 15 star in one year? And if you tell me that's not possible, then again, that is a limiting belief that you're putting on yourself. Why not you? Focus on the positives before you dwell on the negatives. So if at the end of the day, you're like, crap, I didn't send out like my follow-ups, but did you send out your invites? Be happy and focus on that. Did somebody tell you no today, but a challenger lost five pounds in the first month of doing Beachbody? Focus on that. Um, this one, be a mother F and CEO of your business. And I'm going to censor myself in case there's kiddos around. Be the CEO of your business. The term's kind of overused now and I kind of hate it, but be a freaking girl boss, own your business and handle it. And I know it's at the end, but level the F up. That is our motto for this year. Level the F up. I asked the other day, how many invites did you send last week? And I saw coaches say none that I know want this to replace their full-time income, want to be a star diamond by the end of the year, want to be an all-star legend by the end of the year. You, that does not happen if you don't level the F up and do the activities that you need to do. Goals are now rather than months away. And I know we've been talking about quarterly goals. I want you to focus on this month. I want you to focus on adding your coaches and hitting Emerald and hitting Ruby and hitting Diamond and hitting Success Club. Because if you focus on the goals for February and you focus on the goals for March, you're not focusing on this month. You're not focusing on the present. Focus on the goals now rather than the months that are far away. And this last one, and some of you may not like me for saying this, but I wouldn't be your coach or your upline or your grandma or whatever the hell I am to you if I didn't say it. Quit telling yourself that it's okay if you grow slow. That is a limiting belief that you have put on yourself and you are giving yourself permission to not grow, to not level the F up. If you have been a coach for three, four years now and you have not hit diamond, it's because you've allowed yourself to not hit diamond. It's because you've allowed yourself to not grow. If you have been a coach for over a year and you are not a solid emerald or you've never hit emerald, it's because you've given yourself permission that it's okay to grow slow. It shouldn't take you a year to hit diamond. It shouldn't take you a year to hit emerald. It shouldn't take you four years to hit star diamond. I know some of you are gonna wanna punch me in the face when I say these things, but it's so true. And it's because you've put this limiting belief on yourself that it's okay to grow slow. It's okay to be a discount coach. It's okay to not follow a program. It's okay not to follow a meal plan. It's okay not to do this. Quit instilling that limiting belief in yourself. So that is my topic for tonight. Um, and I thought I was going to do social media. It's been a year since we've done a social media call, but I feel like this is a good call to do as we go into the new year. Um, some of us are having some rough months, me, myself included. Like, I'm at SC2 and just going to be like, shut the F up. Like, congratulations. At least you have that. That's not the norm for me. And I'm struggling. I'm struggling not hitting milestones and goals this month. It's the mother effing night, Ashley. Like, calm down, sit down, and focus. Um, so that's why I want to do this call tonight. So I would love to hear from either some OG coaches on the team. There's a couple of you guys on the call. Or if anybody has any comments or concerns, if any of you are like, I'm kind of looking at they're, they're going to hate me. Emily or Ashley that are on the call that I've been coaches for a long time. Have you used any of these limiting beliefs to give yourself permission to not be in certain areas or anybody else that's on the call? I would love to hear from you guys. I am sick of hearing my own voice and I really want to drink my Shaco. Barold, I'm just going to mute you and I'm going to make you talk. So there you go. Oh my gosh. Love you. Literally pregnancy brain. As soon as you call on me, like everything went out my, my brain. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I was one of those people whenever you were like, who invited last week? And I was like, none. Like I didn't do any. And I know. Can, full can now, I pick like, on you for a second, Bearwald? Go for it. I looked over at Bill. So the way mine and desk is, is like Bill's right there. And I looked at him. I said, do you know who just mother effing told me they didn't invite last week? I'm like, do you know? Yeah. So, I picked on you in my office. I just want to let you know that. That's okay. I deserved it. But, uh, so yeah. So like this week I was like, I need to stop feeling sorry for myself with my whole pregnancy thing. It's been super hard. I feel like I've relied so much on my physical transformation that like 
now that I don't have one, it's like going the opposite direction. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? But I let that limit my belief that I can't grow it. And I know, Ashley, we talked about it all the time. You were like, when I was pregnant, that was when my business like really took off because people saw me working out while I was pregnant. They saw me drinking Energize, drinking Shakeology, all of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, like it, that's definitely something I can do. Like I still get my workouts in. I don't feel like crap anymore. So I can have my Shakeology. I can drink my Energize. Um, so yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm like, I'm still that thorn in your side. But this year is the year that we like get it together, get our stuff together. And we finally like something just clicks for us and we just go. And I was like one of those people, you take like three steps forward and like five steps back, but not anymore. Um, like I said today, I sent out 10 invites or 11 invites in like less than five minutes. And someone was like, yeah, actually perfect timing. Like I was going to reach out to you. I'm glad you reached out to me because I'm ready to do this. And I never would have done that had I not pushed myself to invite. So that's what I had to say. Thank you. Thank you for letting me pick on you. Anybody else want to chat? I can chat. I had to turn my light on so you can see me. I was wondering if you just had your camera off or you were in the dark. <laughs> nope, I was in the dark. Uh, so I'm glad you unmuted Ashley first. Um, well, I don't know if, I, if this is just con a continuation of all the kind of stuff you said, but um, I was reading in my, per it was for my personal development from high performance habits, habits about um, the challenge. So if you think about this from like a physical, physical perspective, right, from changing any of the fitness programs, right, for the most part, they're hard, right, they're hard. T20 is going to be hard. Any of the programs we do, they're hard, but when we push through the hard of the program is when we change, right? It changes us because we put in the time and the energy, we're persistent and we see results, right? That's, I mean, that's what we were doing with fitness programs. That's why we're all coaches because we've seen what it does to us. But for some reason, our society is teaching us that hard is bad, right? People have pills and patches and you know, for the stupid, it works, whatever, whatever. So hard is bad. And anything that is uncomfortable or pushes us or challenges us is bad. But yet here we are showing them that you got to do the hard work to get the results, right? In terms of fitness programs. So why, why aren't we doing that with our business? Why are we running from the hard? Why do we run from the hard invites from the hard follow-ups? Because those same hard things are going to be what challenges us is going to allow us to grow into the person that we want to become. So it was like a massive, for me, that personal development was like, yes, absolutely. So you can't, so that goes right into the limiting beliefs and any of these beliefs that Ashley's are talked about, we have, you have to be able to work through them. Um, because if not, then you're, you're not going to get where you want to go and it's going to be miserable. So I'm going to say. touch base on that too, because one, that's amazing. Um, and two, it kind of reminds me, Emily texted to me last week. We talked like every day. So I think it was last week. No, I'm like, what did I tell her? Like, I, and she said she was proud of me. And I'm like, why are you proud of me? I don't get a lot of text messages saying that. Oh yeah. Um, and I had shared my income progression. I don't know if you guys remember, I shared the income progressions on the team page and a lot of coaches skip 2007. If you were yeah. around. What, what 2017 dear god <laughs> um and if you're around for i don't even know what to call it was a shit show that year it's basically the best way to put it um my income dropped thirty thousand dollars in one year it was the year i was pregnant too it's a good year to have a kid and <laughs> your income to drop but i shared that i shared that and emily said she was proud of me and i didn't really understand the magnitude of like why it was a big deal. Like, why is she telling me she's proud of me? And then I realized that most coaches skipped over that year. It's just like that year didn't happen because they don't want to share with people that you will have hard moments in this business. You will have rough patches. You will have a shit-tastic year, but how you rebound from those hard moments, how you rebound from those hard times in your life, in your business, it's going to make an impact. Um, and kind of, I think, I think that goes hand in hand with what Emily was saying. It's just there, you will have times where you have hard things happen, where you lose someone close to you, 
where your marriage is on the rocks, where you're trying to figure out how to become a new mom, where you're gaining weight and you don't know why, where you have coaches quitting for whatever reason, you have returns after returns. But how you overcome those hard moments sets the tone for your business and it shows other people you're not going anywhere. Like you're sticking it out and it's, it's going to build you to be a one strong freaking coach. Right, sorry, I went off on a tangent. That's okay. It's good. Thanks for sharing, Em. All right, I don't want to take up too much more time because we've already gone 40 minutes. So a couple of a quick things. Um, I don't have a call to action for this call. I do. I'm going to put in the team page. What limiting belief did you have and how are you going to overcome it after this call? That's your call to action. Boom, on the spot, thought of it. So again, it was what is your limiting belief and how are you going to overcome it? I'll post a post in the team page to talk about it. A couple of things happening. One super weekend is this weekend. Emily has already announced in the team page. She's doing one virtually. So if you cannot attend one, um, listen to hers. I, she already told me not to ruin any of the announcements on the video. So I will try not to post anything on Friday. No promises. I may get really excited and announce where the success club trip is. That may just be it. Emily said I'm turning off notifications of the team. Uh, you know, I'm going to ruin it for you. And when I get the email with all the information tomorrow, just tell I'm me. Ruin it. I will. I'll tell That's you. fine. Because our super weekend rarely shows the video. So that will actually save me. So if you could just send me that location. I will. I'll tell you. But also, I want to reiterate, and I tried to do this in that post, but if you have one locally, go. Oh my God. Like, don't be like, oh, it'll be easier for me to stay home and do the one virtually with Emily. No, no, no. You need to go. You need to be in the room, see the people, hear the people. So go. This is only for like, if it's not convenient people. or not convenient. If it's not, there's not one close to you. Yeah. Um, I preach highly of them because I'm on the council and I plan them, um, but get to them, get to events every quarter. So four times a year, I think it's down to three. Maybe it's four. I don't know. Every quarter. Okay, so we have that next Monday is something Ashley Bearwald and I are going to start doing is every two weeks, we're going to have a Emerald party. So Emerald in 24 hours. So we'll have a call next Monday. And then they will start rotating starting the fourth every two weeks. Um, Ashley and I will be rotating those. So can you tell what the emphasis this year or rank advancing? Because if we want to be an elite team this year and not we want to be, we will be, we got to invite the coaches and get more blood on our, more blood. Oh my Lord, new blood on our team. So that's what we're going to be doing every two weeks. Tuesday, okay. stay tuned to the team page because I will have a very exciting announcement to make. No, I am not pregnant. Calm down y'all. Um, <laughs> The first time, the other day, I was like, I'm six months like, oh, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, just because I don't feel good does not mean there is a baby in my belly. Like, sit down and shut up. Um, so I will be coming into the team page on Tuesday to make a very, very exciting announcement. I'm super excited to share with you guys. That is what I have going on. Print out your BATs. Check your coach online office. Make sure you're good to, for tomorrow. A lot of you start your last week of qualification to get invited to the team retreat. Um, so go in and check. Uh, we recognized a kick up today with one of the coaches that would have lost rank because we didn't check it in time. So make sure you get in there and make sure you check your online office and make sure you are good to go. If you are wanting to be invited to the retreat, lock in Emerald so you can start that qualification. If you are my personally sponsored coach, please check your emails. I think that is everything. If you posted a picture of the team call, please tag me on Instagram so I can share it. So I can create a FOMO experience. That's why I do it. All right, y'all. I love you. You guys have a great night and I will see you guys on Monday. Good night, guys.